This is his 10th lap already, and he's already done 200 lengths of the swimming pool and three hours of cycling. And that's because Matt Sharp isn't just an athlete, he's a triathlete. Let's find out what that means. So Matt, tell us exactly what a triathlon is. Well, a triathlon is basically swimming, cycling and running, all one after the other without a rest. And how far do you have to go? Well, there's lots of different distances, but what I do is Olympic distance, which is 1,500 metre swim, 40 kilometre bike ride, and then a 10k run to finish off. I'm exhausted just listening to you say it. And, I mean, presumably you have to train quite a bit. How often do you train? Um, well, I train in every day, and at the moment, in the, in the depths of winter, it's about 30, 25, 30 hours a week, something like that. Wow. Matt usually burns off four to 5,000 calories per day, compared to 2,500 calories for your average male adult. So you must need to eat quite a lot of food to keep yourself going for all of that. Well, your body's like a car, really. If you don't put the right fuel in, if you try and, if you try and train 30 hours a week on 2,000 calories, whatever the normal person eats, you're not going to be able to do it. Should we take a look at how much you eat in a day? Yeah, let's go. OK. Matt's diet is scientifically worked out by a nutritionist to provide the calories and nutrients that his body needs. This is what Matt eats in a typical day. That is a heck of a lot of food. Can you take me through your, through your food day? Presumably you start somewhere over here. Yeah. So what, what, what do you start with? Well, in the morning, uh, just to wake me up before swimming, I have just a glass of squash and a couple of biscuits, just because before swimming, I can't really stomach a big breakfast. So you just start with a little bit of something to get yeah, you going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So after the swim, we pull out the big guns. What do you have for breakfast? Um, well, I have a, a wheat-based cereal to start off with, followed by some toast with some jam. And then I like to have a yoghurt after, because it's actually a quite a good source of protein. And then I have a big bowl of porridge to wash it all down, just because it's a really good source of slow-release carbohydrates for the bike ride later on. Massive breakfast, I'd say. Probably about three times what I have for breakfast. Um, and, then, and then what have we got here? Whilst I'm cycling, I have a banana, a couple of jam sandwiches to keep me going. You'll have the jam sandwiches while you're cycling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a long cycle ride, about five hours. Well, you're, you're... That sounds dangerous to me. <laughs> no, your body doesn't actually have enough energy in it to train at high intensity for five hours. What happens is if you train for that long, you start to go into something called hypoglycemia which is when your muscle, you go into a dip, basically an energy dip, and your muscles run out of glycogen and you start running on the proteins, which isn't very efficient. And, uh, so basically the energy, you, you can't run on the energy from the food anymore, you're having to use your body's reserves of energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's really in the reserves. And so it's really not good. You can go like lightheaded and you, you're really weak and it'll take you a long time to recover afterwards. Mm -hmm. so, so, you, so you're basically feeding, literally feeding the, the, the energy straight into your body to yeah, be able yeah. to make that cycle ride. Yeah. Then what you got here, this looks like another breakfast you got here. What's this, uh, lunch? No, this is um, I have scrambled eggs on toast after the cycle ride. Any particular reason why eggs? Well, they're a good source of natural protein. I like the flavour, and you can add anything to them, really. OK. What have we got here? What are these two huge pots of coloured liquid? Uh, these are milkshakes or protein shakes. They're, um, they're a good source of natural protein, and also milk's actually a really good source of calcium. Mm. So it helps your bones to recover and stay strong. And will you have them in two big blocks like that, or, or do you sort of carry on drinking them throughout the day? No, I have them about 20, 30 minutes after your session. Almost like a sort of a food repair for your, for yeah, your body? Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. And then over here, uh, it's, I guess it's supper time. Mm. What have we got here? I go for pasta with sauce and some meat, this, this time some uh, salmon for the protein, the good carbohydrates, mm -hmm. and uh, also some vegetables as well, that just for the vitamins and minerals. Mm -hmm. Because when you're training, you use up more calories than the average person, but also more vitamins and minerals. So, you, you so need you're to... topping up everything all the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pretty basic dish, but it's quite healthy, and it's also massive. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you're training this much, you seem, you seem to get hungry every, every half hour, really. So that's, that's one of the best things, where really. You can just eat as much as you want. Just carry on eating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's what I'd do. If, if I ran all the time, I'd just spend, spend all those calories that yeah. I've, I've lost eating more. I, I wouldn't yeah. change shape at all. And then at the end of the day, we've got something else here. Yeah, this is just a snack, really, whilst I'm just relaxing in the evening, just a cup of tea and some flapjacks, just a bit of sugar, a bit more carbohydrates before I go to bed so that when I wake up in the morning, my body hasn't been to starvation for like 10 hours, whatever. And so when we're talking about food and, and sport at, at your level, when you're a top athlete, does the right food make you go faster? Oh yeah, definitely. What you put in is what you get out, really. So the better you eat, the faster you will be able to go. Yeah, yeah. If you're training and you're pushing your body really hard, you really notice like little, little changes. 
Well, I've had a fantastic day, but I do know that if I ate anywhere near as much as Matt does, I would be enormous. But that's because different people need different types and different amounts of food, depending on their body size and the amount of exercise that they do. But what's really fascinating is when you take an extraordinary athlete, somebody at the peak of their ability like Matt, you begin to understand how the type of food that you eat affects how you live.